Do Garage Band, Garage Band Weekly. Oh wait, that's the theme song. We haven't even started. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. It's Garage Band Weekly. This week on the show, we'll be taking a look at the Boys Noise Sound Library Pack in Garage Band iOS. We'll be talking all about Song Timber. And uh, I had a few Garage Band issues last night preparing for the show, and I recorded and captured them. So we're going to talk about that. That's going to be our tip of the week. All that and more coming up here on Garage Band Weekly. Let's do it. Garage Band. Oh, yes, it is time for Garage Band Weekly here on Studio Live today. If it's your first time here, my name is Pete. This is our show all about Garage Band. Yeah, an hour, and we just talk Garage Band. It's cool. It's fun. It's uh, it's a good time. And uh, thank you for being here. If you've got questions, we do Q and A throughout the show. Even though we got segments here, and we go through each segment, I want to make sure that we are indeed interactive here. So if you do have questions, comments, or anything in between, you can throw them in the comments section here, and uh, just put the word question in front of your question if you have a question and we'll circle back when we do some q and a and if you've just rocked up here just say good day whether you're here on twitch or facebook or youtube drop a comment say hello tell us where you're from we haven't done the who are you and where you're from for a while so if you're here live just say hi my name is blah i like garage band and i come from this town and this country that would be kind of cool and if you're here on the replay don't worry you don't miss out uh, make that your comment just drop. I'll, I'll do a pinned comment straight after the show saying, hi, my name is Pete. I'm a garage bandaholic and I'm from Adelaide, South Australia. And you can do the same. I think that could be a bit of fun here today. Let's dive into our news and notes because uh, we don't really have much. <laughs> so there hasn't been a whole lot in the way of garage band news. As you know, a couple of weeks ago, we got the new garage band packs and we've been working through those here on the channel. We're doing the very last one here today. So we're going to be looking at the Boys Noise Sound Pack today. That's the last that's going to round out all 10. Can you believe it? In the last two weeks, two and a half weeks, we've looked at 10 different packs. We have the Dua Lipa and the Lady Gaga pack, uh, the Remix Session, and then we have the Eight Sound Pack. Sorry, you can tell I'm a bit behind here. I, I prioritized coffee. I love you, folks, but uh, I needed to have coffee and I needed to be ready with coffee. So I don't even have my, uh, my reflector set up here. Let's just do this real quick because we'll need our iPad on the screen here at some stage. So hold the line, please, while I throw my iPad up here. If you want to know how I do this, I use StreamYard for the live streaming here, and I use an app called Reflector, Reflector 4, which is what can let me do funky things like share this to my Mac screen. So here is my iPad. And uh, this is me working on one of the other packs. And one of the problems that I had last night, oh, my mouse is not functioning, there you go. One of the problems I had last night was with uh, a, a, a file that got corrupted, which is never fun. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later on. But uh, the sound packs that we're talking about here, if you're brand, brand new, just jump over here, go to Sound Library, and what you'll be able to see is down the bottom here, under these artists and producers, we got these. We got 10 different packs. You got two remix sessions with Dua Lipa and Lady Gaga, and you've got eight packs of artist and producer sounds and samples and loops and all the other bits and pieces. It's a lot of fun, and we're going to be checking out this final one, The Boys Noise. That's what we're going to do today. We're going to be live recording what's going to then be my look into the pack. So yeah, two birds, one stone here today on the show. So what else is in the news? Well, it's, it's the it's two days before here in Australia. So it is the 30th of August here, just to date this show, 30th of August, which means we are two days from September, or as we like to call it around here, Songtember. Yeah, if you're new to the channel and you don't know what Songtember is all about, I'm going to tell you. Now, you might be thinking, Johns, what's the deal here? What does Songtember have to do with GarageBand? Well, I tell you what, it has everything to do with GarageBand for a couple of reasons. Number one, many of the creators, many of you here that watch this show are GarageBand users, and many of you create, record, and release your songs in GarageBand. I'm looking at you, Gary Hubs. I'm looking at you, Jade Starr. I'm looking at you, Glenn Clark, Matt Anderson, Darren Anderson. A lot of folks use GarageBand and have been creating, recording, and releasing their music and have participated in Songtember in the past. So it's a great time. What is it? 
It is a song in a month challenge. All you need to do is on the 1st of September, you sit down and you start creating a song. Now, yes, it would be best if it's brand new. Can you use some riffs or some licks or some lyrics from something that you've done before? Sure. Can you use an idea that's already on your voice memos? Sure. I'm, I'm considering doing that for mine. I've got this riff and this hook on my voice memos and I'm considering cheating. I insist that I cheat. Uh, I'm considering cheating this year with, with Songtember by using something I've already started on because it's still my own work. It just, maybe I wrote the riff in July and then I'm doing it in September. So that's what you do. You sit down and you do that. You record it. You mix it. You master it. We support you. So the community comes together here. Uh, we do it here on the channel. We do it over on the Create, Record, Release Facebook group as well. So there's a couple of places that you can do that. Instagram, uh, Twitter, wherever you go, just use that hashtag. That one there, hashtag. Hashtag song timber, and then you'll be able to see anything that's shared by me or by anyone else. It just becomes this really cool community spirit that we have that goes on throughout the month. So everyone's creating, everyone's in the same boat. And if you get that creative block, you're like seven days in and you're like, ah, like I've, in previous years, I've been seven days in and just gone, this is complete shite. I'm going to completely pivot and uh, and change this to, to something different. So uh, it, it can happen. You, you don't need to stress about it. You don't need to worry and go, oh no, it's, it's not going to plan. Uh, the plan is there is no plan. Now there's, uh, there's a bunch of videos. If you want to get yourself uh, uh, familiarized, what I'm going to do here, and I'll put these down in the description following the show for those on the replay. Uh, but if you search my name right now, Pete John's Song Timber 2020, check this out. 22 videos. This is everything from the initial announcement video that we did. Uh, you can you can hop out the way there, uh, that one. So there you go. There's, there's many of you that were here in the chat for the announcement from last year. So yes, August 29th, 2020. And tomorrow, we're going to do this all again. So we're going to be back. There you go. Hashtag song temper. There's me. Lighting was a little bit dodgy back then, but that's okay. And uh, I, I still had the blue couch. So it was a little bit different there. But yeah, you can go through and we document the whole process here throughout the month and you can join us. And then down the bottom here, you'll notice that we have all these other videos. So you can see me follow the process all the way through from setting up to write a new song, recording in some guitar, drums and bass, song sections, how to add keys in there, capturing some vocal recordings, writing some vocals. What if I fail? So that was what I was talking about when I hit that point there. So this one was on what the, uh, the 23rd of September. <laughs> And I was second guessing myself. I'm, I'm reviewing my mix of my song on the 23rd of September. So yeah, stuff happens. It, it, it gets a little bit weird and we just we just push through. We create a song, we do it all in song timber. So if you're in, I want you to right here in the chat right now go, I'm in. Song timber, I'm in. And if you're uh, if you're on the replay again, leave a comment on this video saying I'm in. And do join us because tomorrow, if we go September launch 2021, if we instead of searching for Song Temper 2020, check this out. There is our live launch party, which should be a lot of fun. We'll be reminiscing about previous Song Tempers. There you go. It's, it's got a little clip of last, last year's song. I'll put my little mini video of last year's song. So we'll be talking about what happened last year and in 2019. We'll be going through what we're going to be doing this year. And uh, we'll also be chatting with a couple of Song Temper folks uh, from the community about their Song Temper experience and what they're planning to do this year. So there it is. Go over there, set yourself a reminder right now, and that'll be at this exact same time, same bat time, same bat station tomorrow, the launch. It is here. Who would have thunk it? Could you believe that we're already at Song Temper? I sure as heck can't. All right. Uh, yes, RIP the blue couch. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to scroll back on up because uh, we've got a lot of uh, wonderful people here today and uh, we're going to, uh, yeah, I, I love the Kronk theme too. By the way, the, the opening theme there is from uh, Mark Kronk Song Lovell, who is, uh, who is a very cool creator and has donated a bunch of his, uh, a bunch of his music for our theme songs. All right, Montreal, Canada. <clears throat> on the Canadian side, we've got uh, Mr. Mark Bro. Hello to you. Melbourne, Australia and lockdown forever. Yes. Uh, shout out to my friends who are in various parts of the world where uh, lockdown has once uh, more commenced because of the C word. Uh, yeah, it's fun. Hello, my name is Thomas and I'm from Pittsburgh. We won't hold that against Thomas. There you go. Uh, Joe from Ontario in Canada as well. Uh, Melbourne, Australia for deep gravity. Melbourne representing Gregory O'Sullivan from Melbourne, Australia as well. We've got plenty of folks here from Australia uh, and I hope you are all doing well. All right, we are going to scroll on down. Uh, we've got some questions here. We'll, 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 we'll pivot to a bit of Q&A here because I think we had a question here from, uh, from Barry. 
I was asking about Cubasis, I believe, because Cubasis is on sale at the moment. Uh, do you know how? Do you know the Cubasis three on sale and how long you think they will keep it on sale? Uh, I think it's about a week uh, from from what I've seen. Uh, Cubasis is on sale till September twenty third. There you go. It's no, it's not. It's a long time. So that's a good thing. If you want to use Cubasis for your for your garage band, Cubasis for your song timber song, uh, maybe pick it up now. And I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, someone, but I believe the in app purchases are also fifty percent off at the moment, which is pretty darn cool. Uh, a lot cheaper, a lot easier way to get yourself there. Uh, there you go. Oh, that's annoying. You know what, Gregory? When you buy something and then it goes on sale. Just think about the extra time that you would have got with that. It's like when you, you buy an iPhone 12 and then the iPhone 13 is about to come out. Just think about the extra time that you're going to get with that product. You can't live in you can't live in the past. You can't live in regret. Uh, yeah, I miss the old couch too. You can't live in regret. You just got to keep moving forwards. Keep on moving on. Uh, Deep Gravity's in for Song Temper, setting myself up for failure. There is no such thing. Uh, I've kind of realized that, that there's no such thing. There's just finished. There's no such thing as failure because even the worst... Failure just teaches you something that you didn't know that you may be able to implement for a future one. Gary O'Sullivan's in. Uh, yes, Mr. Thomas Christ is in. <laughs> yeah, Mark's, it's crazy time. But we'll talk about that as well. We'll talk about what you can do to manage time because it's not just about getting it done. Doing something in 30 days seems like it's a bit of a stretch, especially if you've got a full-time job, a full-time family, a full-time house to maintain, all the rest of it, paying the bills, keeping the lights on. It can be a challenge. And I have those same challenges. I have to continue doing my job, which is running this channel. It would be great if I could just switch off the channel for a month and then just do Song Temba. Maybe one year I'll do it. Maybe I'll be in a position where I could do that. At the moment, not so much. So uh, yeah, I I, uh, I appreciate you. Hello to Soul Rack. Hope you're doing well. Uh, Anthony Dower from Washington, D.C. Hope you're doing well. Tom Calhoun, someone I haven't seen around the place for a while. Uh, hello to you. Hope you're doing well, my friend. And uh, I think we're caught up. We're caught up on the chat. So it is time to move on. So yeah, that was our in the news. <laughs> Not much in the way of news, right? Uh, it really is just that uh, Song Timber is coming. And if you are a GarageBand user... Uh, contributing and participating in Song Temper is a thing you can choose to do, and we're going to be having a heck of a lot of fun around here. It's always a super fun time of the year. I've been stoked for it for a long time. Joe and Barry too. Yes, Joe and Barry uh, are in for Song Temper. Let's do this thing. All right, let's jump on over, and we'll just quickly test our setup here to make sure that we're all good for this pack. Now, unlike other things where I've been a little bit more prepared, I've got to admit something. I've played with this pack for all of five minutes. Uh, and it's, uh, it's, yeah, it, it's, oh God, <laughs> oh dear, we've got someone that's here. I'm, I'm just going to take care of something real quick. Uh, the moderators are probably already onto it, but my goodness, there are some people with far too much time on their hands. Let me just come in here and uh, permanently remove a user from the channel forever. Uh, boom. Thank you, Tom, who's already done that. Uh, we are, oh, they're already hidden. There you go. And we will uh, report that as well. Yeah, if, if anyone wants to just come in here and uh, put some, some hate speech uh, in the show, you're going to get removed. Uh, you're going to do it for around about four seconds before one of the moderators removes you forever and you're gone. All right. Uh, now that that unpleasantness is out of the way, let's move back to some music. So this is the Boys Noise Pack. We're just going to do a quick preview here to make sure we got some uh, some sound. Here it comes. Yeah, yeah. All right, and uh, we're going to record it. So we're going to do it live. It was just like, uh, just like, what's that guy? Um, the guy that's on that famous clip where it's like, we're doing it live. We're doing it live. That angry guy from the news. Yeah, that guy. We're going to do it live. And this will eventually be clipped and become the the uh, actual tutorial. So I do this a lot on uh, on Patreon, by the way. A shout out to my patrons. Uh, if you want to see me do this sort of thing more often, I often record my videos like this. I'll just record them live here and then edit them afterwards. So that's exactly what I'll do here after uh, after I do this show. I'll download this and this will become the the review of the pack that folks see. So let's see if we can do it all in uh, one take here, shall we? Let's do this. Oh, it started straight away. <laughs> we need to go back and go back out and uh, we'll hit the preview button and we'll start talking about this pack in GarageBand. Yes, another day, another pack here in GarageBand. In this one, we're taking a look at the Boys Noise Producer Pack. 
Hi, my name is Pete. This is Studio Live today. And uh, we've got 10 brand new packs here in GarageBand. We've looked at all of these. Selection, Oakfelder, Take a Day Trip, Track Girl, a heap of them that are in here. And today we're going to be looking at this one, the Boys Noise Pack, to round it out. Now, there's a link down in the description to a playlist that has all the videos of all the packs that I've already checked out. Let's now jump in, because this one seems pretty funky. And what have we got? We have more than 240 Apple Loops. We've got four drum and beat sequencer kits. We've got over 10 keyboard patches, and we've got one live loops grid. So we're going to work in reverse order today. We're going to grab the live loops grid, then the keyboards, then the drums, and then the loops last. Yeah, we usually do it the other way around. We just want to do it for something a bit different. So how do we do this? Firstly, to download the pack, all you need to do is go into your sound library. So from your garage band in a new track, just go to sound library, scroll down to the bottom, tap on one of these, and instead of downloaded, you'll see the get button. You hit the get button, it downloads the pack, you have these sounds ready to use. And by the way, if you're a Mac user, you can actually transfer these packs over to your Mac. They're not available on Mac, but we've tested pretty much all of them now, and they all now seem to be compatible with Mac. So what you need to do is just put one of these loops or samples into a program project in iOS, open it in GarageBand Mac, and then it will bring that sound library. It will download the entire sound library onto your Mac. It's pretty darn cool. There's a video where I show you how to do that that I'll link down in the description. All right, we're going to hit done on this one. We'll go back and just make sure that we're creating a new track because this was our previous demo. So we need to create a brand new track. We'll save out of that one. And we'll come back here to our ideas folder. We'll hit the create song button. And uh, what do we say? Live loops is what we're going to use. So up the top here, we're going to tap the live loops grid. We're going to scroll across and we should be able to find the boys noise live loops grid. There it is. Boys noise. Always reminds me of a boy band. I don't, I don't get it. Uh, there you go. So there we go. And we turn on the monitoring. So what we've got here, well, that was weird. It took us back to our microphone. Okay, we'll go back to the live loops grid. By the way, you can just swap between the two modes by using this button here if you're new to live loops. So we'll do that. What I'm gonna do is firstly, when using live loops, the first thing I recommend doing is actually changing things up. So changing your tempo and changing your key signature. Why? because everyone else is going to be using this tempo and this key signature. So I'm going to do something a bit different. We're going to, I don't normally go with faster, but I'm just going to randomly go to 140 BPM today to really like launch this. And instead of being in C, we're going to bring it up to D just so that it's different again, because if someone else is using the same pack and they haven't changed anything, theirs is going to be at 120 in C major. Ours is going to be at 140 in D major. Is this going to be a giant massive mistake and a colossal disaster? Maybe. We'll find out together. So what I'm going to do, uh, we're going to, I'm just going to pick some loops. Now, ordinarily, you'd kind of go left to right here because you've got sort of your minimalist stuff here and then you've got sort of more full-on stuff. But I'm going, to, I'm going to start around about here. So we're just going to use the default ones here to start building out this track here today. So we're going to hit the record button and hit this button. That's cool. Let it sit on that for eight bars, and then we're gonna change it up to something else. This one. And then change it to this one. All right. That's going to do us because we're, that's given us 16 bars, right? So this is something to play around with here. So we'll hit the track view button here now, and I'm back in my familiar track mode. So you can see how quickly you can build out like a whole bunch of sounds here. Now you'll notice here that this pack uses a whole bunch of MIDI sounds and MIDI loops, which is pretty cool. You can see what it's actually doing. If you scroll in here, this one is our Doom Tune Bass that we've got there. Doom Tune Bass, we've got the Analog Alarm Lead, and we've got a bunch of other things here, the Deep Hollow Bass. So you can see it's already used using a lot of the keyboard patches. And of course, we've got a, an 808 bass here as well. If you want to check out any of these sounds individually, come in here and solo them and we can hear what... That's a nice noisy 808, yeah? We'll turn it up. I like it. It's going to work well. Now, the one thing that I did think here is I thought that when we got to this bar nine, that this section here really should have been... Uh, where is it? So it goes through two bars there... One, two, three, four. So this section here, I reckon we can swap these around. I think we should probably do that. Now, it gets a little bit tricky in here without song sections. So we're going to add in song sections first. You get some additional bonus tips in this video here today. Uh, why is it only seven? Oh, so 17 bars. So we want it to be 16 bars. So we'll start by changing this back to 16 bars, just so that it finishes off where we need it to. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to add in some uh, sections here. And we're going to change this one to four bars. 
uh, like so. And we're going to change this one to four bars as well, like so. And come back and add an eight bar, like this. And we're going to reshuffle these, so we're going to have eight, four, and four. Now, this just makes life easier for shifting things around into. If we tap there and we go all sections, what we're going to do is we're going to move these bits and pieces into their various sections. So what did I say? I wanted the first section, which is going to be this section. Oh, did that work? This section D. Uh, eight, four, four. Yep, that's going to be cool. So this first section here, what we can do is if we come down to the bottom here, we should be able to split this out. We're going to have to split some of these that are not actually split. We'll go bump, split it, bump, split it. It's a little bit of extra work, but uh, it'll help us out in the end. We'll split these in just so that they're going to move nicely into their new zones that they need to go to. This one here as well, boom, and split it. So that's our first section. And if we come down to the bottom here, we can tap outside, not select all. <laughs> we can tap outside and drag a box. Whoop, we missed one. Got to split that one. Just tap, tap, split. And we can come down here, drag a box. And we can move these. So we're going to put these in our first section. So see what we've done here? We've made this section D is now that first section. Now we're going to do our split thing again because we want this second one to actually come first, if that makes sense. And again, yeah, the, the splitting does get a little bit uh, tedious here, but it's just going to, it's going to make it easier for us when we go to start editing things in here. I didn't realize quite how many, <laughs> how many tracks that there would be here that we'd have to split. Uh, there we go. That's all cool. And that one we will split as well. So what we can do is now that we've split all those up, we can grab the next section, which we actually want this sort of more minimalist section to be. So we'll tap and hold, drag our box like that. And there we go, and move this over to our next section. And I thought this would just be fun to do and to show because not a lot of folks realize that you've got this level of control here in GarageBand. They just sort of start recording and do it very linear. This one here moves over and goes into our last section. All that's left to do is delete off our blank section, edit, delete, and there you go. We've changed the order of this little ditty that we've put together here. All sections, and we're back. So now we transition from this one into this one. <laughs> Then, yeah, and you can start building it out doing that sort of stuff. So song sections in GarageBand, super duper handy. That's your live loops. We can play around with them to our heart's content. I show those on other videos as well. Let's now add some more different instruments. So if we wanted to build up on this, we can hit the plus button here and we can go to our keys. So let's go to our keyboard sounds and hit the more sounds button here. Now to get to these ones, we're here in our recently downloaded and you want to go to the boys noise and here's all the ones we have. So we've got some arpeggiated sounds. We've got some lead sounds, some percussion sounds and some synth bass. Now you've already heard most of these because they've already been in a lot of those loops, but we're going to add in some anyway. So let's add a different bass. I don't think we saw, we saw most of these actually. <laughs> They're almost all in there already. The organ distortion bass sounds fun. So let's see what this is going to do. And we're in, we're in D. So this, this could be kind of fun. So we can play around with this one. I reckon we're going to do something like that. Now you've got your controls over here. You can change things like the flanger. Oh, that's cool. Maybe this just becomes a pad. Yeah, let's pad it up with this one. So hit the record button and we'll just hold down on this D. That's looking good. Now, I was trying to remember, yeah, it does It does record in your knob movements. You might have noticed there that while I was playing just a pad, I was actually moving the flanger back and forth. And I wanted to see if this makes a bit of an interesting effect. So let's solo this and find out if this is going to work in here. So uh, we'll come into this second half where I started playing around with it and play it. Yeah, that's it. There you go. So don't forget that all of your knobs that you have here in GarageBand are recordable, meaning that when you're playing something, you can fiddle with your knobs 
and it's going to actually remember. It's going to remember your knob fiddling goodness. So if you wanted to do that, you can. And you'll notice there that it's now, uh, it's, it's changed it up. So when you get this little dot next to your, your sound, it's because we've changed that flange and we've moved it around a little bit. If you want to save that as a custom instrument, you can come in here and hit the save button and give it a name. We'll just call it Organic Bass PJ. That's what I normally do. Hit return there. And there you go. It puts it into your custom instrument sets with all the other one, like my day spa wub that I created <laughs> in a previous video. So that's pretty darn cool. And uh, we'll come out of there. As yeah, Thomas is saying here, there's some great sounds in this pack. All of these packs are amazing. It's really, really cool. Deep Gravity can hear the Doctor Who thing. Yeah, woo, woo, woo. Maybe we should do that. There you go. This is why I love doing these live, is that we can... Uh, <laughs> we've lost our display. We'll, we'll grab our display back, and then we'll continue on with this. And this is why I don't love doing these live, because sometimes your screen drops out, and the bottom drops out. But yeah, let's grab another lead instrument here. We'll just plug back in. We'll plug our audio interface back in, so we have sound. We'll have a quick coffee break. Thanks for uh, bearing with me. And we're going to uh, crack on and grab another one. So we'll uh, we'll come back out here to our sound view. We'll take the the, the what is it called? That one, the <laughs> solo off, and then we'll we'll jump back in. So let's add in another sound here. We're going to hit the plus button, and we're going to go to more sounds on the keyboard. We're already oh no, we're in a custom now, aren't we? So we need to actually go back. So we scroll to the top, recently downloaded. Once again, we go to the boys' noise, and let's find. Let's play with uh, one of these lead instruments, shall we? What about the Horizon noise lead? That's pretty cool, right? And again, because this is a an alchemy synth, we can now change this. So. And we actually had someone mention uh, Doctor Who before. So let's just see if we can um, put in a bit of a Doctor Who homage, because we're going to do like a... Yeah, let's try this. This could be fun. All right, we'll hit the record button here. I missed the start. All right, I'm going to have to do it from the four bar, because it starts just before the uh, starts just before the one. So we'll give it a four count. All right, so I hit the notes there, but you'll notice that it didn't really, uh, now I'm gonna get a copyright claim on this. We couldn't really hear it that well. So we'll just delete out this little part here. We can change that because we can change the velocity that we hit these with. So because I used my finger and I didn't hit them hard enough, we can come in here to our edit mode. Sorry, let's just take this. I get told that I move too fast in these tutorials sometimes. We're here in our track, we've soloed this one. We're gonna tap on this, we're gonna tap again, we're gonna hit edit. And we can come in here and edit both the notes we played, but also the velocity. So there's our note. We actually want it to hit a little harder. And this one, we also want to be harder. So tap it, velocity, and oh, it keeps going off. Tap, velocity. There you go. Boo -doo -doo. So, and because I actually moved it, it, it doesn't show the movements I did in there, but we can uh, we can change the velocity every time we hit it. That one looks okay. So let's just see. Does this does this have a bit of a uh, a Doctor Who kind of vibe to it in this little section? Kind of. So let's bring it back in with our mix here, shall we, and just see if this works in. In fact, we need to turn everything down a little bit because this this is already getting a bit too intense. This whole track. So we'll just give everything a few dBs down because it's already a bit full on. So let's just see if this little Doctor Who homage works in here. Kind of gets buried in the mix a little bit, doesn't it? So maybe we'll, uh, we'll, we'll play around with one more sound here and uh, see if we can uh, complement this a little bit. So we'll hit this one here, and we've got these arpeggiated sounds. So why don't we try the calculating machine arpeggio and see. <laughs> Holy dooly, that's uh, cool, but intense. We'll turn it down. <laughs> Sorry, anyone that's there, like if you've got a cat on your desk and you're watching, the cat's gonna have gone flying. Right, okay. Let's come back over here. So we'll go and we'll try this one again. Right, so that's just holding down one note because it's setting the arpeggiator here for you and it's using an arpeggiated sound. What if we hold two notes here? We'll do a D minor uh, fifth. 
that's pretty darn cool. So we'll do this G minor fifth. So we're just holding down the D and the G. So yeah, D minor. Uh, we'll hit the record button here and hold these. All right, so what I did there is just towards the end there, I grabbed the top D as well. So it kind of did, I'll show you what it did there. And this is why the arpeggiated sounds are so cool because you don't, you can get these cool sounds without really a whole lot of effort. So we hit play on this one. And then I added this note. And then it just does that little thing into there. And if you bring this back, bring this back into the mix. This is the most intense mix I've done of anything. <laughs> Right, that's pretty cool. And there's an I can hear that arp again somewhere up here. So it's using it's using those same sounds. All right, that's that's pretty cool. <laughs> and we're gonna get a bit intense here. So what we probably need to do is let's just take a couple of these sounds out here, because uh, it seems to me that it seems to be that uh, yeah, we're we're just not quite getting. Um, it, it's a little bit too intense. So uh, let's just remove a few of these. Maybe we've got a few too many bases. So let's uh, let's take this bass out. Let's take out uh, this clip line noise and maybe even the 808 noise. So let's just go. That's a bit better. Just creating some space. That's better. So we've just removed some of those sounds because this was getting very intense here already. Uh, let's add some more beats. Now that we've removed some stuff, let's add some stuff. So drums and beat sequencer kit. We come over to our drums here. We grab the beat sequencer. And as we know from previous times, we hit the bottom left here. We go recently downloaded. We scroll on down until we hit the boys noise pack. And we've got four different ones here. We've got the analog drive, big bang, control voltage, and natural structures. I like the sound of control voltage. Right? That's pretty cool. This might actually make a really good break in this. So what, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do some experimenting here. Because I reckon just, we're just going to record this in to this little section here between bars 7 and 8. So if we come back to our beat sequencer here, and we hit the record button, turn it on. All right, so maybe we actually do it for two bars because it's such a fast song. Maybe we do it for two bars. So what I'm going to do, we'll bring this back to here. And this is where you can have some fun with something like this, is that we can, for this section, what I want to do is we want to remove the other percussion that sounds that we've got here. So we're going to remove this noise here. We're going to trim. Oh, we're going to not trim. We need to split it. Split it out. Boom. Split it out here. Oh, right, on the, right on the thing. Yep. Boom. And uh, remove it up to bar... That was the wrong spot, wasn't it? Hang on, it goes from six to seven or seven. seven to, do, do, do. All right, I've put it in the wrong spot because this actually should be down here. That's all right. We'll leave those splits in place. That's fine. We'll just remove this one from here, delete that out, and we'll remove this noise effects here just to create some space coming into this section here. So let's just see what this is going to sound like as a little weird sort of break. So this will just let our lead breathe a little bit over the top here. So I think this is good, but I think we want to get rid of this bass here as well. So we're just going to do, 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 split that out and remove that one there. So again, we're just, we're just creating some room here for this to go in. We'll go back to the start and hear this whole lead part here. So it's just letting it have that space to do that in there. I'm not super happy with this lead part. I'd like to re-record that. And in, in a future video, I would do that if I was, if I was making this a real track and, and staying with it. But there you go. That, that's something that we could do here with the beat sequence. So you don't need to add it throughout your whole track. You can just add it there. The other thing we could, of course, do is use manual drums. If we hit plus here, we go back to our drums and we go to more sounds. We go to the boys noise pack again. This time, let's look at for natural structures and see what we got here. So we got some kicks. Well, that's a nice reverse kick. 
some nice tom sounds, cymbals, hats, a couple of snares, claps, and that one's cool. I like that uh, reverse kick. I don't think it's going to work in here, but I just want to try and use it. So let's just record and see if we can bring it in. So I just wanted it to do it, boop, boop, just coming into those sections. So we'll turn it up just so that we can hear it and we'll see if we can get these ones timed correctly. Kinda, it's almost on the spot. <laughs> so just going in there with that boop. And sometimes these kits, you can find these weird little sounds that'll just complement your track pretty well. So. Yeah, just something there on the side. So that's pretty cool. We've got some sounds going on there. Now, the one thing we haven't played around with is probably the feature of this pack, which is the Apple Loops. And the Apple Loops are up here. So we tap on this loop icon. Uh, we go X out of here and we filter by sound packs. We don't use the Tom Mish. That's what we were checking out last time. So that one's chosen there. This time we want to grab our uh, Boys Noise, which should probably be right up here under B. There it is. Go back to our filter bar, go back to Apple Loops, and here's all the loops here. Now, we probably won't use too many in here, but there's some really cool stuff in here. Like uh, you've got, whoop, I went out of there. Like the classic tambourine break you can have here. Yeah, you got some hi-hat toppers. So you've got a bunch of stuff to create beats in with here. Like a whole beat there that you've got. Now, remember that we've, we've done this in a bit of a sped up kind of way. <laughs> so there's a lot of stuff there. Now, if you wanted to add any of this stuff in here, all we need to do is grab it and bring it on across. So why don't we use, uh, where was that that tambourine? Hey, Mr. Tambourine, I've forgotten where it is. So I'm going to show you the search feature. If we come here and we just search tambo, it's going to hit enter. There you go. Here's a couple of tambourines. So we've got our bright tambourine topper. That could actually work kind of cool in the second half. So we're going to grab this, drag it, and place it in a spot where we want it to come in. So I want it to come in for the second half, so I'm gonna drop it there, and then there it is. It's gonna come in here, and when we come back in with this bit here, we're gonna get. Kinda of cool, yeah, so yeah, and that's not too bad. Um, so there's a heap more here to explore, a lot more different Apple loops that you can play around with. Just, uh, just experiment, just put them in here and see what happens. Now, I've made this pretty intense, but don't forget, you can change the key and the, te the tempo to make it different. So if we wanted to make it a little bit more brooding and angsty, we could go, let's bring it down to A, and let's make this tempo down at like 100. This is the beautiful part of using Apple Loops, uh, 98 is fine, using Apple Loops and using instruments, virtual instruments, is now we can get... Completely change it. You can completely change the feel of something simply by adjusting the tempo and the key over here. Pretty darn cool. There you have it. The boys' noise kit here. The final of the kits that we've checked out here in Garage Band iOS. There's a link to a playlist with all 10 of them that we've reviewed here on the channel down below. That's going to do it for that one there. That's our feature topic this week. Again, if you're just joining us, we are going to uh, we're going to use that as the review of that pack. So this is uh, you, you got a sneak peek into it. Yes, there are a few things we'll need to edit out to just sort of uh, shave it down a little bit. But uh, that is it. Yeah, clear clear Doctor Who feel. I know. I'm wondering if someone's done a remix of the Doctor Who theme and it's going to sound exactly like that. Uh, let's jump into a bit of Q&A. If you've got questions, we've got hopefully answers, or if I don't, the community here may have them. Uh, DJ Normal Norman, who I saw said that they've just got their MacBook, which is cool. Uh, yes, welcome to the world of Mac. I've just joined it myself. I've only been less than a year as a Mac user. It's a pretty cool uh, world, but very different. Uh, he says, do uh, Apple Loops work in Logic? And Thomas has already answered this. Yes, and there's a bunch more of them too. I, I am going to check out Logic soon. Here's the thing. In Songtember, I'm going to be using GarageBand. So I'm going to be using GarageBand on iOS. I'm going to be using GarageBand on Mac. I'm going to be using a combination of the two and bouncing things around to get everything done. And uh, then... What I'm probably going to do is move into Logic in the fold. This is the plan that it's been. I've been working to learn GarageBand Mac so that I can use it in Songtember. And then October, November is going to be diving into Logic. So if you've ever wanted to check out Logic or if you wanted to see me struggle my way through Logic, 
that would be the uh, that would be the time to do it. Uh, yes, ask away. If you do have questions, we will try to answer them. And while you're th- while you're thinking of those questions, and while we're uh, we're talking, let's jump into the rant of the week, shall we? So, what I wanted to rant about this week may seem completely counter to the whole thing that I just talked about with Song Temba, which is yeah, you've got to create, record, and release your music. You got to get your music out there. You got to share it. I've been I've been doing a bit of soul searching. I've been doing a bit of checking out of other YouTube videos and uh, tutorials and other things. And uh, there, there's a lot of folks, a lot of argument and debate around whether music and art is indeed art if you don't share it. Now, I talked about this on a Creator Town Hall episode recently. Uh, my man Joe Gilder recently mentioned this, that he used to say the old Seth Godin thing, which is that, uh, yeah, art is not art unless you ship it. Unless you share it, your art is not actually art because art needs to be shared. And yeah, I do subscribe to that for the most part, but there's a lot of folks that I'm finding that are doing music for themselves. They're creating music for the joy, for the learning process, for the creative process, and then they're playing it to themselves. They're going, I like that, and then they're moving on. And the more I do this, the more I think that's actually okay. So I'm trying to re-kajigger the create, record, release The release part of that is personal. So creating and recording, to me, what I want the release to be is to finish songs. Now, this could probably be debated as well. Do you actually need to finish songs? I think you do. I think that is an important thing, that putting an end on something. There's an old adage that says that the work will expand to fill the time available. That's why Song Temp is cool, because the work will expand. You'll get your song done, and very few of you will have it done by the 12th or the 15th or the 19th. Pretty much everyone seems to get their song out on the 29th or the 30th of September or sometimes the 1st or 2nd of October, which is totally cool, by the way. So, yeah, I say all that to say I don't think that you do necessarily need to release or to share your music if you don't want to. But here's what you're missing out on if you don't. If you choose to not share your music, you may not be able to identify some of the blind spots, some of the gaps, some of the... uh, Problems that you're having with technique, with mixing, with mastering, with playing, with composing, with arranging, with songwriting, with lyrics. Because you are one person, and if you share it with yourself, it's your opinion, right? And that's fine. That's cool if that's what you want to go with. But if you share it with others and you ask for constructive feedback, they may tell you things like I've been told before, which is, Pete, your drums suck. They're too boring. You need to vary them up. Pete, your uh, vocals are mixed too loud. You always mix your vocals too loud. You need to drop those down. Pete, you're too dry. You need a lot more reverb on there, buddy. Your overall mix and master is sounding too dry. And people didn't say things like that, but they were very kind because they shared them in places like the Create, Record, Release Facebook group and other places like that. So again, You don't have to share it. If you're 100% content and it's working for you to just complete your song, put it out there into the world and uh, say, yep, you're done, then you're done. And uh, I'm happy with that. All right. Uh, Let's uh, see if we do have any more uh, questions here before we move on. A question here from Anthony Dower. Have you read the Apple book, Everyone Can Create Music on iPad? I haven't. It's free, by the way. No, and I'm not even aware of it. So that's that's a, that's an interesting one. Uh, and it just goes to show that I, I'm 100% not aware of everything that goes on around the place. So uh, let, let's just Google search this, shall we? Because that's what this show is all about, right? Let's just Google search things. I just, I just realized I'm still wearing my hat. I kind of didn't realize until right now. <laughs> so we'll, uh, we'll search this. So what is it called? It is called Everyone Can Create Music on iPad. I like the sound of this. We may see a review coming on. So it's, it's on Apple Books. Here it is. Everyone can create. Oh, so it's more, I guess it's everyone can create. So it's more like for an educational, for like teachers and stuff. Let's, let's see what this is. Everyone can create on iPad. Hmm. From Apple Education. It looks kind of cool. Released in 2018. So yeah, I wonder if it's been updated since 2018. I'm not sure. So what is it? A short podcast, your own drum beat, an instrumental song, your own remix, an original composition. How to create. That's pretty cool. 285 megabytes somehow. Okay, everyone can create video, everyone can create. I had no idea that this series existed. This is a great tool. 
There you go. There's your resource of the week. Uh, obviously, I'd, I'd suggest that uh, if you do want to learn about GarageBand iOS, there's uh, a way that you can do it that will help me out and that, that has been updated and that is uh, is up to date as well, uh, which is if you go to studiolivetoday.com slash courses. And I wasn't meaning to be a shill on this one, but here's another option for you, studiolivetoday.com slash courses. This is my $10 GarageBand beginner's guide. So five hours, curated content, all transcribed, all in order. And if you want to learn how to get connected, get set up, record, mix, master in GarageBand, you can check that one out. But I will be checking this one out because it's available for free by the looks in Apple Books. And that would be a cool thing to check out. So I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued. Thank you, uh, Anthony, for the, for the recommendation. There is uh, some more work for me to do there, clearly. <laughs> uh, question for Barry Glenn. Is it possible to monitor, monitor through the interface with two sets of headphones using a jack splitter? Jack the splitter as opposed to Jack the ripper. I'm reaching over here and talking loudly because I'm trying to... Uh, I need to clean out my drawers because uh, I, I, you know what it's like when you just start piling things in, but I'm just going to reach over here and grab something to show you. That yes, you absolutely can. So what you need is uh, something like this. This is a 6.3mm uh, adapter or a what's usually called a quarter inch adapter. These are TRS, so it's a stereo plug. This goes into your audio interface and you can plug two pairs of headphones into this end. I've used this quite often when I'm tracking other people's vocals, when I've recorded my wife. We can both listen at the same time. Drawback is that if your interface only has one headphone jack and you're using this, you won't be able to actually separate out the mixes. So you're both getting the exact same mix at the exact same volume. Unless you've got a headphone um, splitter or a headphone um, amplifier in between, you won't be able to do that. You've obviously also got, if you've got a smaller, you've got these versions, the three and a half mil or the eighth inch jack. You can do the same thing with those. So uh, in fact, I've got a guide. I forget that I have this. I have so many things over on my website that sometimes I forget that I have it. So if you go to studiolivetoday.com slash cables, I reckon I've actually got these adapters and everything all linked there. So this is my cable guide, not to be confused with the cable guy, which is a bad Jim Carrey movie, uh, but I think converters and adapters. So yeah, here you go. Uh, convert, oh no, I, see, I don't have the double adapters, but you can use these. So this is to adapt all sorts of different things. Maybe I need to add it in here to my cable guide. Uh, but if you do go to something like the Sweetwater Cable Guide, or you can go to my video about cables there, or shop with Amazon. So this is probably the best way to do it. If you're in the US, just hit this button here. This will take you to an affiliate link, and it will go straight into the cable section here. All you need to do is uh, search in this section, and if you go, what would it be? It would be TRS Double Adapter, and you should get yourself something. Uh, it's not going to find it, is it? It's, it's a whole bunch of other things. Yeah, you might need to dig around a little bit there. What, what would we call it? Headphone. I think if we go headphone, headphone splitter. I think I'm trying to be a little bit too technical there. Headphone splitter. Uh, yeah, there you go. So you can get these cable versions as well. So you can get the little versions like this, or you can get ones like this. And you can see there, like six bucks, seven bucks. It's not that expensive to get these adapters and converters. There's a little wire one, like the one that I've got there. So uh, yeah, headphone splitter, and you can use that. But just keep in mind that it'll only work. And the other thing is, if you've got an iPhone that or an iPad that has a headphone jack, those are TRRS connections. So keep that in mind. You will need a converter that will convert TRRS to TRS first because it doesn't have the microphone. So all these double adapters and splitters don't have anything for your microphone. They are just pure stereo output. So they're just going to work for your headphones. But good question. And I'm sure uh, a lot of other folks uh, would be wondering about that same thing. DJ Normal Norman, I'm trying to master as this is definitely my weak point, but everyone's opinion is different. Uh, the best way to learn... <laughs> <laughs> the best way to learn is to start doing and see what works for you. You're 100% right that especially when it comes to mixing and mastering, they are like 20% technical and 80% art. So it is an art form and different people will give you different advice. The basic advice is that you want, when you're mastering, it comes down to this. You want it to be a balanced mix generally which means you want, and mixing and mastering in general, you want it to be balanced, which means that you want your left and right, you want your stereo fields to be right, and you want your frequencies to be balanced. You don't want a whole bunch of bass and no treble. You don't want a whole bunch of treble and no bass, unless that's what you're going for. And again, you don't want everything on the left and nothing on the right, unless that's what you're going for. Usually you want balance. Balance of stereo, balance of frequency spectrum. And the other thing is you want it to be a competitive volume. You want it to make sure that when you release it, when you are sharing your music, that other people's music isn't here and yours is here. 
Because if someone's listening to a playlist and you're and they're, they're listening to this music up here mastered to, to zero dB or to to whatever the the, the um, LUFS monitoring LUFS system they want to go with, and yours is down here, you don't want that. Does that mean you have to crush it and you have to do it like Metallica and Foo Fighters do, where it's just a sausage the whole way through? No. In fact, if you do that, you can often overdo it, especially if you're starting out. Less is more. If you're starting out and you overdo it, I've heard so many folks end up with distorted, pumping, over-limited final masters. You want to go easy? Do that. Like, do overmaster it to see what it sounds like, and then do it again. When you see me doing mastering videos here, I'll often send something out. I'll send it out. I'll be like, yep, yeah, that doesn't sound right. I'll pull it back. I'll drop it down a bit. I'll send it out again. It's trial and error. And then you want to reference. So probably the final part of that is to reference your masters, to go and listen to them on other platforms and to actually put them with other tracks, to have other songs that are similar to what you want them to sound like, and then use that as well. And apart from that, yeah, there's some people that say you can't master in your DAW, you need special mastering software. There's other people that say, no, 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 you can do everything with just a limiter and an EQ. There's other people that don't master at all. Our buddy Joey Helpish says, I don't master. I just put it all in, in my mix, make sure it's at a competitive level and push it out. And all of those are right. <laughs> that's, the, that's the beauty part of music. Regardless of what you do, if it works for you, it's correct. And that's it. Uh, Deep Gravity says that coming from someone that is self-conscious, getting others to listen can be highly daunting. But as you say, Pete, the CRR community is awesome. Yeah, so if you are looking to start sharing your music, I do recommend joining a community. Now, it doesn't have to be this one, but I just happen to have had one. And I know what some people say, I'm not on Facebook, I hate Facebook, I don't want to get into fights with flat earthers and anti-vaxxers and things. You don't have to. Just don't even tell anyone you joined. Just join up and join this group here. Join the Create, Record, Release group because this is, as you see there, 955 people. They're all creators. So they're all artists and creators that are in the same boat as you. So instead of going to these groups where you've got a whole bunch of um, self-proclaimed professionals that want to bring people down and that want to uh, be negative about things... We've only got people in there that want to be part of this community and that want to create, record and release music. And the feedback that those folks share in there is really cool. So uh, do consider joining the group. And through Song Timbre, it's going to be really cool because people start posting their demos. They start posting their ideas, their lyrical ideas, and people pile on in a good way. They're like, oh, have you thought about this? Have you tried this? Why don't you add some strings? Uh, I've had things where I put a, I put a track out there. Here's an example of why things are cool. I put a track out there. My buddy, Dan Baker, who's another amazing YouTube creator and fabulous musician, like he knows his stuff. He's a theory guru. So, uh, so I put a song out there and someone actually said, Pete, this song would sound great with strings. Have you thought of Dan Baker? And I'm like, oh, that's a good idea. And I'm like, I tagged Dan and said, Dan, you play violin. This song needs violin. And he's like, yep, I'm on it. And I sent him the track and it was my song called Things Change. And he actually created, he recorded violin in, oh, let's see if we can find it. Let's see if we can find the video because it's fascinating and it's it it's relevant here because it's in GarageBand and it shows you what could happen when you're part of a collaborative community, you actually get these sort of cool things happening. So if I go Dan Baker, collaboration, violin, Pete Johns, uh, this, is, this is putting YouTube to the test. Let's see if it can find the video that it is. Uh, okay, there's my video. Uh, there's there it is. Okay, so we've got a couple of videos here. So this was uh, was my video that I did originally, where I talked about import. Actually, no, this is the importing the audio from Dan. And if we come down here, this is the one here that uh, that Dan actually recorded the violin. So let's just take a quick look at this one. It's a remote recording session using GarageBand. Now, this song was written by Pete Johns, who is a fantastic contributor to the Garage Band fraternity on YouTube and a great song. There you go. So um, that, that was pretty cool. And I'll, uh, I'll, I'll share this one because if you're not aware of Dan Baker, he is an absolute legend in the, uh, the music and the Garage Band community. So go and check that one out. I know we're getting a little bit off topic here, but I think it's important to, to talk about these things because if you are nervous, because we don't talk about, we will talk about it through the the rest of the month. But if you are nervous about sharing your own music, that's okay. It's a hundred percent understandable. Everyone is. Everyone gets nervous, and it does. It does take a lot of courage to just put yourself out there when you haven't done it before. So, uh, good job to you, Cam, and good job to everyone here. Solrak, uh, have you ever recorded the river from your voice on one track and wave uh, the dry all the way down and have another track with no effects to combine both together? 
Uh, that might not have come through in translation quite well there. Uh, sorry, I accidentally sent a message but didn't check the message. Uh, if you've resent it, uh, I'll try and answer it again. I think I know what you're talking about. Uh, read the third message. Okay, cool. I'm, I'm scrolling back up. Have you ever recorded the track with your dry all the way down on your voice and have so much reverb that a different track on your voice with no effects come out? Yeah, so this is a, a good way to do things. And I have indeed done this where you have one track that is basically your dry track and one track that's your wet track. So you can you can do it two ways. You can double your vocal. We've talked about doubling vocals before where you record a vocal and then you record it again. And maybe your first vocal has reverb and delay on it and maybe your doubled vocal, what I often do is don't put delay and reverb on that because that's just to thicken it up. You don't want two delays and reverbs competing with each other, so you leave it off. Sometimes I'll even add a bit of distortion to that second one and sometimes I'll just knock it out of tune a little bit. If you want to see this in action, what I would recommend... If you search Pete John's thick <laughs> vocals, not just Pete John's thick, that just gets you a whole bunch of uh, hate videos about how thick I am. But if you look at this one, the vocal thickening trick in GarageBand, this is something that I recommend if you're looking to do this sort of stuff. You basically grab your vocal, duplicate it out a bunch of times, and in this case, you can use the same vocal. You don't have to re-record it. And then what you do is you slightly detune it and you slightly change the timing of it. It's, it's an old trick, but it's a good trick, and it can really work to, uh, to thicken up and to give you some, some good vocal differentiation there as well. So uh, thank you. Thank you for the question. Uh, hello to the Metalhead Hippie. I hope you are doing well uh, over there. Thank you for being here. Uh, Dwight Bailey, hello to you. Uh, hi, Pete. I got an interface for my iPhone. Tried it. Seems to work good. I think I had the levels too high. Yes. Uh, so Dwight. So Dwight's slightly new. I know, Dwight, you've been recording and you're playing guitar and singing for a very long time. I think you're just getting into recording. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you're just getting into recording on your mobile devices. What I would recommend, I've got a video for you, my friend. Uh, it is called Input Gain, and it's the thing that people, when they're starting out, get wrong the most. Because if you're an old school uh, musician like myself, like many of the folks here, you want to turn it up. You want to turn it up to 11. But here's the problem. There's two types of volume or two types of gain. There's one that's your input gain and one that's your output gain. And what folks do is when they're not hearing things, when you're recording or you're double tracking or you're recording vocals or guitars, you can't hear it well enough, so you turn up the volume. But the volume you need to turn up is the output gain. It's the output gain on the track. It's not the input gain that's going in. So the input gain, is, as you can see here, this is my audio interface, and this video here explains it, the bad quality and angle on that one, but it's how to set your microphone volume in GarageBand. It's the same with your guitars. The same principle works that way. And because you're in a digital environment, what many folks do is that they turn it up too loud on the input gain, and then they turn it down on the output gain. What that does is it adds an additional room noise. That's where you get more hiss. That's where you get distortion and clipping and pumping and all those bad things. So I would uh, highly recommend checking out that video. This one as well, how to reduce hiss is another good one there. And input versus output volume. So that's where I explain all about the input and the output volume. And there's another one that I did. Uh, I can't find it here at the moment. But there's one where I talked about like distortion and clipping. If we just go Pete John's clipping... It's the same sort of thing. This one here. So how to stop distortion, clipping, pumping, and noise. It's the same thing. So I talk about the input gain, but also some of the other things. So there are a few videos that I would check out there if you just search. And again, you can do the same thing I'm doing here. Just go to YouTube, search my name, Pete Johns, and then a topic. So if you go Pete Johns input gain, just like I've done there, it's the easiest way. There you go. You've got like five videos straight away that talk all about managing volume in GarageBand. And it's also you know, cross compatible with other DAWs because the same principles work the same in everything. Uh, yes, there you go. Yeah, got an interface for your phone. Good stuff. Uh, I'm looking forward to, to hearing because Dwight is a, a regular over on the Metalhead Hippie Show and uh, he's recording a lot of his stuff and uh, hopefully it will just make it even better because we're all learning. That's the thing. We're all at different levels here. That's the good thing about GarageBand is that we've got people creating professional recording, like people that are putting out recordings that you wouldn't, you wouldn't go, oh, that's good for a GarageBand recording. You're like, that's a good song, <laughs> well-recorded song. That's, that's radio ready. And then we've got folks that are starting out at the other end of their journey. And that's cool. Everyone here is welcome because everyone's at a different level. Everyone starts at zero. I can't say that enough. 
Uh, Jay says, uh, need to get my mixes checked out. Uh, absolutely, uh, do that. It's like jump over to the Create Record release group. You can share them as a YouTube video. You can even, a lot of folks even share the WAV file via Google Drive. So if you want people to really listen to the actual quality instead of SoundCloud that compresses the crud out of it, you can do that. So definitely get involved in some of the communities that we have around here. All right, I'm scrolling down here because I'll see if I've uh, got any other questions. Mark says, recently acquired the Audient Evo 8. It does have two headphones out and the capacity to send a different mix to the headphones. Oh, my, my dog wants out. Uh, you're going to have to hold the line here for a moment because uh, I didn't realize the dog was in here and he wants to actually leave. So just a moment. You want to go out? There you go, mate. There you go. <laughs> you know what it's like when the dog needs to go out. Yeah, absolutely. Didn't actually realize he hides under the desk over there. I didn't realize that he was there. Uh, that's that's professional for you. We're, we're a professional uh, organization around here. Uh, hello, Truth Hurts. I hope you're doing well. By the way, we're in the, uh, the Q&A section. We've got a couple more to go. We're going to go late here today because we're getting too many cool questions here that, uh, that, that we're, we're, we need to get to. Um, uh, Michael says one of the uh, few packs that you just spontaneously sing vocals over the top of. Yeah, <laughs> I do that quite a bit. I like to, uh, I like to sing vocals over, uh, truth hurts. What's crazy is my songs sound better on my phone pro than in my logic. Yeah, and that can happen sometimes. Sometimes you do need to, uh, do need to listen across different platforms and it's never going to sound perfect on every platform. You need to, to, you, uh, get it the best it can across a few. Uh, Gregory says, uh, mastering, compress the hell out of it until there's no dynamic range left and then apply a random Cubase's EQ preset job done. Well, that there's an approach for you, right? <laughs> Maybe not. Uh, do join Create Record Release. Highly recommend it. It is a great group of great people. Uh, and yeah, Dan is indeed a cool cat and he is the man. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, if you've forgotten about Dan, get over and check out Dan. he got some really interesting stuff there as well. Uh, DJ Norman, the channel vocal question. This is a good way to control reverb tails with sidechain for clarity. Uh, that might be answering another one, another person's question. Uh, Mix Club, have you ever tracked live drums on the iPad? I have not had an iPad for years, but thinking about getting one again. So I haven't personally tracked live drums on the iPad. I've done some testing with my Steinberg UR44, which does have uh, six inputs. So it's got four mic inputs as well as a stereo input. And I have recorded up to six inputs on GarageBand. I know folks that have used eight channel interfaces that have actually recorded eight separate microphones into iPad. You can run into trouble in terms of the performance. So I wouldn't do it on an older iPad. I'd make sure you've got an iPad Pro or a, a more modern, maybe in the last two or three years, if you're going to be recording. Because remember, if you're recording eight on any device, if you're recording eight channels of 44.1 kilohertz, 24-bit audio, that's a lot of throughput. You need a lot of horsepower to be recording all of those at once. So yes, you can do it uh, if you've got more modern gear. But I don't have acoustic drums, so I haven't done it. If you if you want to check out my gear guide over here, studiolivetoday.com slash gear, you will just need yourself an audio interface like this one, like the Steinberg UR44. This is a newer version, the UR44C. If you want to record in multiple microphones, multiple inputs, this is the sort of thing you'll be looking for. Again, this one here has the four pre's on the front. It's got the uh, the stereo inputs on the back, and it's got two stereo outputs as well. It's a very cool little unit. Uh, Focusrite also make uh, good ones like the 18iH, which does the same sort of thing. We'll just see how Sweetwater can find it. There you go. So there's uh, Focusrite Scala 18iH, a little bit more expensive, does pretty much the same sort of thing. Again, four preamps on the front there, and the same sort of stuff on the back with your, oh, where's the back? There you go. Uh, this has got MIDI as well. And there you go. You've got line outputs and line inputs. In fact, you've got two stereo. So you've got eight total channels on the 18i8. Hence the name 18i8. Good one, Pete. So yeah, there's some options over there. And if you do use the gear guide there, what they do is uh, they will break off a small chunk and send it my way. So you will be uh, doing your thing. You will be helping keep the lights on here at Studio Live Today Studios at the same time. So thank you for that. Uh, da, 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 da. no worries, Dwight. I hope that helps you out with it. Uh, yeah, and it's it's the it's the one thing. It's the one thing that you got to do. Uh, yeah, poor Basil. He's got to go. I think he heard my wife out there, so uh, he wanted to go and uh, get away from get away from this boring talk. He's like, I don't even use GarageBand. Uh, Barry, uh, Glenn says, this may make me look dumb, but what is sidechain? Uh, no problem. What is sidechain? Now we can't do it on GarageBand iPad, Barry. So <laughs> you probably don't really need to care about it. But what sidechaining is, is it's where a, 
an effect is based on another instrument or another track coming in. The classic is where you hear that wub, wub, wub kind of sound. So I won't, I won't even do a demo here because you can look it up. If you, go, if you just search Sidechain on YouTube, there's a bunch of tutorials there. But it's basically saying you're, you're connecting and you usually connect something like a bass with a kick drum. So have you ever heard those basses where it's just like vroom, 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 vroom. What the producer is usually doing is setting up a side chain where they're chaining the bass to the kick drum. So every time the kick drum comes in, the bass kicks in. And it basically is creating like a gate that only lets the bass be heard when the kick drum's coming in. So connecting two different chat two different channels, side chaining one channel to another. It's just just consider it like chunk chunking in there, and then it's only going in when that one's going up. And absolutely, there's no uh, there's no dumb questions around here for sure. There you go. Exactly that. As usual, Thomas Christ explains what I explain in uh, three minutes in about two seconds. Sidechain is when you connect the compressor of one track to the output of another track. And yeah, and you do get that uh, wub wub kind of sound. Uh, how do you make a master channel on GarageBand MacBook? Good question. Let, let's bring it up here again because we're, we're over time already. I'm not going to finish within the hour today. That's all right. We've got some time. Uh, all I've got to do the rest of the day is set up for tomorrow's uh, tomorrow's song timbre party. So we'll bring this one up and I'll show you because it's really, really simple. I've just learned it myself. So hopefully I can actually remember. We'll, uh, we'll jump over here to GarageBand on the Mac. And it is just here under your track menu here. So if you're in a track in GarageBand on Mac, if you've got the track menu here, and scroll down, see we've got all these, show arrangement track, movie track, transposition track, tempo track, and master track. So if we click on that one, scroll to the bottom, there is our master track that we can use uh, to uh, to manage that. And if you do all the others, you can say you can put the arrangement track on, which puts this one up the top here. You can do your arrangement, uh, your transposition track, your tempo track. You can show all of these. So you can choose to show or hide all of these different tracks. And then when you go in and do your mixing and your mastering, you're already set up and good to go. So hopefully that helps you out and anyone else with the same question. All right, we, we should probably move on because uh, we, we are going to run, <laughs> we've already run out of time, but we're going to uh, run over, over time. So I'll, I'll actually, I'll hold off on the plugin or app of the week because I was just, I was going to show you channel strip. I'll, I'll show it to you really quick because I got asked this question today and I thought it was a good one, which is, is there, if you're recording like from a microphone or from a, a guitar, uh, is there anything good to sort of enhance your, your preamp to, to give you like what you'd have on a mixer? And the one thing that I found that works the best is uh, something called channel strip. So if we come in here to my audio recorder track and uh, oh, there we go, and we go into my plugins and EQ, if we go here, you've got your basic settings here. So you can obviously add compressors and overdrives and distortions. You can use your, your volume and your panning here. But if you've come from an environment where you're used to having a channel strip, you may want to uh, take a look at this one. It's called Channel Strip and it's made by, uh, I've forgotten their names now. Someone will help me out here. <laughs> really good advertisement, right, Pete? Audio Damage, there you go. Uh, it's made by Audio Damage, who make the Rough Rider 3. And if you put this on your channel here, probably here at the end, you'll see here, we've got three things. We've got a gate, we've got an equalizer, and we've got a compressor, all built in here. So we can actually turn on any of these. You can turn on your gate, your compressor, and your threshold. You get really good little visual displays here, and you can drive these three. And it just means that on every track, you can just throw this on if you want to do some basic low uh, low cut or high pass filtering if you've got some gating you want to do to reduce some noise on your tracks if you want to add compression to a bunch of vocals easily and you want to do it all with one plug-in the audio damage channel stretch pretty cool i think it's about a five dollar plug-in in the us and about eight dollars here in australia so uh yeah it, it's just a good solid plug-in if you're looking for something, if you're used to that environment where you have a channel strip and you just want to have that on each of your channels without having to add a whole bunch of separate plugins, uh, grab the channel strip plugin from Audio Damage. You will not, you won't be disappointed. Do yourself a favor and do that. All right, a uh, quick coffee break and then we'll, I'll show you something uh, fun to finish off here. And that is, I had some issues last night and I thought, because I know other people have similar issues to me, I'm not the only one that have these problems, and it'll often can be fun or at least uh, comforting to see that other people are having problems just like you. So we're going to finish off here by showing you a video that I recorded last night. So I'm sitting there last night. It's late at night. I'm getting ready for this show today. I'm like, okay, I'm going to check out this new pack. I grab my iPad and I plug it in. Uh, sorry, I unplug it and take it out to the other room. 
and I start playing around with it and the track just crashed. It wouldn't play. It was doing a whole bunch of weird stuff. You, you'll see what, what happens here in a moment. So I'll bring up this video. And I'm just going to play this. So uh, this video is four and a half minutes. So you get to see me struggle through this and I explain what's going on as I go through. So we'll jump over and we'll, uh, we'll play this video four and a half minutes long and then we'll come back and we'll finish off the show. This is me and my GarageBand error from last night. So I'm setting up for tomorrow's GarageBand weekly show and boy is my GarageBand broken. I've tried to open a couple of projects. It's taking like minutes to open and then when I play, nothing is happening. This is not fun. Time for the old universal fix. We're going to turn it off and on. Look at it going along here. It's like chopping through like a couple of bars at a time. Now it's completely stopped. It was like going chunk, chunk, chunk. So uh, we're going to close out. Oh, <laughs> I don't know what that did there. We're going to close out and uh, we'll turn it completely off. So we'll hold down both buttons here on the old iPad Pro and we'll slide it off. And uh, yeah, let's turn it back on. See how we go. Now, while this powers up, yes, my screen is filthy. While this is powering up, the problem here is probably I'm using the magic keyboard and usually I'm docked. I've got plugged into power there and I'm docked over here on this side. I'm not doing that at the moment. So uh, that could have to put my passcode in. Sometimes when you undock and then uh, redock or vice versa, you get issues. So right, we're gonna open up now. It's probably gonna try and open that last project. We may be needing a reset garage band if this still does it. Look at that, look how slowly that's going. There we go, okay, it's opened up now and uh, we're going to hit the play button here. We're back, all right. So that's fine and dandy and working, working fine. So, yep, it is definitely just a turn it off and on kind of thing here. There you go, this is the tip of the week for this week's show. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be playing this video. Uh, it's going to be a bit meta. So I'll just check this other pack, this Tom Mish pack uh, that I was uh, trying to play with before that was corrupting everything. And we'll... Yeah, see, there it is. See what it did? Something wrong with this pack. Something wrong with this track. Look, it's, it's not playing. It did this chick kind of sound. And then it kept doing that. Now, what I did... We'll see if we can stop it. I was playing around and I was putting a plug-in on here. So let's just see if we can find out whether it was this plug-in that was causing the issue. It was this one, the Door LP, which I actually like. And I was going to show this on the show. Sorry, Clev Grand, but your plug-in may be causing this issue. We'll go back and we'll hit play. Yeah, no. Okay. Sorry, Clev Grand. Forget that I said it. It wasn't you. But I'm pretty sure it was when I added that plug-in that I broke this track. So we'll close out again and... Uh, yeah, no, it's completely frozen up here now. It's doing its little chunk thing there. And, oh, close the song. Yeah, we'll close the song. All right. Uh, <laughs> it really doesn't like this project. But thankfully, it may have just corrupted this one and not all the others. So we'll try a couple of other things and see if we can get this happening. All right, back to our home screen. Let's just try one other project here just to make sure it's not a more universal issue. It's taking a long time to load these sound packs and uh, load these demos in. So it might, it might have rebroken it with uh, what I did there because it's really not happy here now. Right, so that didn't work. We're going to go back to this one that we know works and see what happens. If it does the same thing here, oh, it, it did load up and it's playing. Okay. So that one's playing now. So closing and reopening. We won't open the dodgy project, but we'll open uh, this one here again and see if it loads up. Yep, that's better. All right, let's play this. Yeah, that's fine. So it is this project. We've got some corruption going on in this Tom Mishpack project. We'll open this one up. It loads and we'll make sure that this, we actually will delete this track entirely. This is a track that was causing issues. We'll delete it and then we'll play. There we go. So what it seems like is that whatever was in this track that I've now deleted, was causing the issue because now we're totally fine. So sometimes you just got to work through it, turn it off and on, check your plugins, check a track that you may have just added, and then uh, you should be hunky dory. Let's go. Let's go indeed. Uh, so yeah, I thought that was interesting. I'm like, I'm going to document this, I'm going to capture this because 
It hasn't really happened to me just like that before, but I've had similar things before. And what I've come to realize is it's usually audio unit plugin related. It's usually when you add in a plugin that does something to the sound that kicks out the GarageBand or more the iOS sound. So I know, especially in previous versions of iOS, this was a big problem where there was like the core audio issues, but this doesn't seem to be exactly that. But really, like troubleshooting with anything, Number one, turn it off and on. Well, close it. Close your apps and reopen them. Doesn't work. Turn it off and on and try it again. Doesn't work. Undo the last thing you did. So they're kind of the three things. I think I need to make a new video that's like the three universal fixes because doing one of those three things fixes almost every problem that I've come across because that seems to be the vast majority are where you've just done something wrong. It also is a reason why, and this is a good reminder as we head into Songtember, good reminder to why I like to use version control. So for instance, here's this song that I've created, but we opened it. Let's rename this one. So this is uh, the, what is it? The Boys, Boys, Noise, Noix, Boys, Noise Pack demo, right? So I've done that here. If I was gonna build out on this, say I did wanna turn this into a new track, before I just go back in here and just start playing with it again and mess something up, I'll actually duplicate this and create a new version. So I'll tap and hold on this one and I'll duplicate it. Now, some DAWs do this automatically and some like GarageBand don't. But what I do, so you'll see this through Song Tember. By the time we finish our song in the month of September, it'll be version 12 or 13 or 14 because every time I make a major change, like recording vocals, like doing a major mix change, like adding a particular plugin, I will create a duplicate copy. Yes, it does take up more space, but guess what? If I jump into this number two now and I start doing weird things, let's just see if we can break it. Let's break it live. <laughs> I'll see if it was actually this plugin uh, that was causing the problem because it's actually a cool plugin, by the way. It says this one here, it is the uh, Door LP from Clev Grand, since we're about to finish it. Let's just see if this breaks it uh, or if it'll actually work. Oh, we've got no audio. Okay, so that's working. Hear that nice crackle? How good is that? That's because we've, we've, we're using this door LP. How cool is it? You get yourself some real crackle going on in there. So yeah, we can turn it off. Pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, that, that's another one. Um, that's another plugin that I was trying to use last night. I don't think it was just that that broke it. I think it was the project as well. But again, if I came in here and added this and it did break it again, guess what? Instead of having to mess around and waste my time, you know what I'd do? I'd come here. I'd go, right, that one's broken. Delete it. Uh, tap on hold on this one. Reduplicate it. Version two. Let's try that again and do something different. So that, that's my recommendation there is version control, uh, especially when you're doing things like that, uh, can uh, can definitely help you out. Rightio, we are done here. We're only 16 minutes over time. So uh, thank you for hanging out. Thanks for all your awesome questions. Uh, hopefully uh, I answered those and uh, directed you towards some of the answers if that wasn't the case. We do have Song Timber coming up. So uh, do set your reminders. We'll give you one more little rant here about Song Timber because I want to make sure everyone knows exactly what's going on. So Song Timber 2021. I just need to uh, to check this one here. So here it is. This is the Song Timber launch party. It's happening tomorrow. Uh, you can have a quick listen to, uh, to my song there, New Beginning there. Let's share this uh, over. I was doing this thing again. Sometimes it doesn't let you share from YouTube there. We'll share this over here if you're watching live. And if you're watching on the replay, uh, do make sure that you uh, do check that one out. Look, 14 of you have already liked it, including me. Uh, set yourself a reminder. That'll be happening tomorrow as you're watching this live at 4 p.m. Uh, Pacific time, 7 p.m. Eastern time. 12 midnight for my friends in the Greenwich Mean Time. I'm sorry. I know it's late. Uh, and 9 a.m. if you're here on the east coast of Australia. So set your alarms, set your reminders, cork the dog, call in sick to work, do whatever you need to do, but be there because we'll be uh, chatting live to a few folks and we'll be talking all about what we'll be doing for the month of Songtember. And maybe you can even start throwing some ideas around because I honestly have no idea what I'm going to create. <laughs> I don't know what the song's going to be. I don't know the genre. I don't know what instrument 
instrumentation we're going to use. Barely know what platform. We are going to be in GarageBand though. So that's the good news. If you're a GarageBand fan or GarageBand curious, then you can follow along as we create an entire song here in GarageBand. That's going to do it for this one. As we say at the end of every show, please be kind to yourself. Go and, go and get some fresh air. Go for a walk outside, although it's probably nighttime for most of you. But go for a walk outside, have a delicious hamburger, do whatever it is that makes you happy. That way you can care for others. Make sure you're looking out for each other out there in the community. There's lots of uh, lots of nastiness going on around there. The, the least you can do is just be respectful and nice to other people. And uh, most importantly, or at least equally as importantly, keep creating because creation is the way to be. All right, thanks everyone. I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now. Let's go out with some uh, some Kronk song, and uh, I'll see you next time. Garage band, garage band weekly. Garage band, garage band weekly. Garage band, garage band weekly. Ooh, see ya. Weekly.